I've been asked by quite a few people over the years on this channel, could I make a homemade gas mask? And there's obviously videos on YouTube of people with the bottle sort of homemade gas masks. And I didn't really want to do one of those videos because so many other people have done them and all I'd be doing is copying them and I don't think that's a great design anyway. So I thought, what's the like cheapest, simplest gas mask I could make and would it work? So that's what this video is going to be about. And I'm going to get a plastic bag and I'm going to try and turn this into a gas mask. Now my theory is that if I cut a little hole and I put a gas mask hose through there, you could either put a filter straight in and tape the filter to the mask, or what I'm going to do is tape a hose to the uh, plastic bag, and then I'm going to be able to just attach filters to there so you can easily change them. The idea is, will that work? So what I'm also going to have to do is probably cut some eye holes in this, and then I'll just use some sellotape on the inside so that makes you know an actual seal um, with some clear sellotape. Um, I'll probably use a stronger tape, uh, maybe some sort of electrical tape or something to do the uh, thing. And then obviously you'd need some way of tying it around your neck, so I have to try and come up with an idea for that. Um, obviously, be very careful if you try something like this at home, just because there is an asphyxiation risk with a plastic bag. Um, I'm obviously on purpose using a type that don't have little holes in them so children can breathe through them. Um, if you don't know, I don't know if this is a thing elsewhere in the world, but in the UK, Lots of companies, when they make plastic bags, they put little holes in them, uh, in, in the bottom, which means that obviously big items don't fall out of the bag, but it means if a kid puts it on their head, they're less likely to suffocate. So you need a bag without those. Uh, obviously, a clear bag would be ideal, because then you don't have to cut eye holes into it, but I couldn't find any in the cupboard which were both clear and didn't have holes in, because otherwise I'd have to tape up the holes, and this seems to be a stronger material. The really thin plastic bags, I think, are just going to rip really quickly. Um, so anyway, I'm going to go and see if I can improvise something together, then we'll carry on the video with what I've got and then we'll test it if it seems like it's going to work. Okay, here is my genius design that's probably not going to work all that well. So basically what I have here is just a plastic bag where I've cut a bit of an eye slit and then put sellotape on both sides to hopefully make an airtight seal there. What I have on the chin section is a Warsaw Pax 40mm hose, a Gost hose taped in and then that connects to a filter and I've just got that in a GP5 bag at the moment just so I can simply um, basically because I don't think the bag's going to hold up or the sellotape or the masking parcel tape I used inside is going to hold up against uh, the weight of the filter on here so obviously what I need to do is uh, have a bag to support it but that could really be any bag now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and test this now, <laughs> we'll see if it works or not, but it's an interesting idea even if it fails I think. Okay, so this is going to either work or it's going to fail spectacularly, so what I've got that here is some paracord and I'm just going to very easily tie that around my neck, um, as I said you have to be really careful if you're doing this, you don't asphyxiate yourself somehow, but right, bag's on and I can look in the direction of the camera. So now what I need to do is just put the paracord under the hose. I really should have done the hose a bit higher. Because so I lined it up where my mouth was going to go, but actually it should have been higher in the bag, I think. So, let's get that tied. Now this is why my advice has always been to people if you need a gas mask, simply get a cheap one from an army surplus store or get a 3M sort of mask because this is actually a lot less practical than, um, you know, just getting a cheap surplus mask. But let's see if it works. So, let's see if I can get an airtight seal first. Well, the bag keeps pulling into my mouth. Alright, let's just go for it and see what happens. Where did I put the uh, thing? It's there, I think. So I haven't got a very good field of view, so well, I hope this is all recording. Yeah, I can just about see the wreck on the camera. Right, here goes nothing. Alright, so far so good. I can get a tiny amount of pine smell, but that would be far less than if I was actually inhaling it normally. So where is that coming in? Let's just try and get this a bit tighter around my neck and not strangle myself. Right, 
pine smell's totally gone. Now the problem with this bag is there's not so much an exhale valve. So the problem's going to be, although I can keep drawing fresh air in, there's probably going to be a carbon dioxide <laughs> build up inside the bag, unless I can vent some somehow. So what I'm going to probably have to do every now and again is break the seal, <sighs> then inhale fresh air. So as I said, I would not recommend you try this at home, just because there's so many things that could go wrong with a homemade gas mask. Right, let's purge the mask again. But yeah, the filter system does actually work, which is the impressive thing once we got started. But as I said, there's issues here where getting rid of the carbon dioxide in the bag isn't ideal. This is why rebreathers can be so dodgy, right? Alright, uh, let's see how we're doing for time. Uh, I'm going to assume that's been a couple of minutes because I don't really want this on my head long enough to... Yeah, I can immediately smell pine again. So, what we've learned from this is that, yes, you can improvise... It's not very easy to sort of all the pine getting on. You can improvise a gas mask using a hose and a plastic bag. The issue being that you can't really vent the carbon dioxide properly from it. Um, unless you made some sort of system where the bag would be held onto your face but it would, you know, when you breathe out it would cause a gap to open that they would then close again. Um, and again, this is the reason why I really don't recommend people make their own gas masks just because there's so many ways you could suffocate yourself or do something stupid with it or, you know, various things like that. So what I'd recommend is if you want a working gas mask that's cheap or at least against tear gas and stuff like that you either go and buy a 3M half mask with the correct filters you want, you can buy disposable ones that give you ABEC and P protection from like, for like 20 quid in the UK, or what you do is you buy a surplus gas mask where you can just easily get filters for it and just do that. Um, trying to improvise your own gas mask I think is a lot more effort than it's worth, because again, if I didn't have a hose and filters laying around, I'd have had to come up with my own hose and filter, uh, my own actual, you know, uh, particular and... Um, sort of vapour filter, and that's not easy to do because I need to have a lot of ground activated charcoal somehow laying around. Um, you know, like, I don't know if there's a way you could repurpose a Brita filter to do that, but again, and then you need the particulate filter. So, as much as there's things you can use for them, they're not going to be as good as a proper military or a, an industrial filter that are a lot cheaper. So, there you go. Yes, this does work to an extent, but you need to be really careful how you use these, as I said, because the suffocation risks and the amount of effort it takes to make one of these when you could buy a GP5 for like $5 or something and then just buy a Polish FP5 filter which is totally safe or buy, you know, one that I've shown you before a 3M sort of P3 filter pad, pre-filter pad or one by another company, cut it to the shape of the hose and put it in um, to actually demonstrate that this is actually in this even though I don't need it with Polish filter because it's safe That's in there, there. And it's actually caught some stuff. Look, even though this is a safe filter, as I say, there's always a risk a filter will leak and there's like some sort of dust and stuff on there. Anyway, so another thing to note is I have pinned this in the comments on the other video now. Somebody very thanks, I'm very thankful to him, did tell me that I had the P3 filter around the wrong way. It should still catch stuff, but it's not guaranteed. So make sure you read the instructions on the individual filters you buy because the filter I bought on the page, they said, you have to have the right hand side facing outwards. Apparently with these you actually have to have the right hand side facing inwards. 
So the right -hand side faces towards you and the side to catch the asbestos has to be the blank side. So make sure you're aware of that when you put these in to one of those filters. Right, anyway, thanks for watching. So yeah, there's my weird improvised gas mask. It sort of works, but um, it's more trouble than it's worth, I think.